and I'm doing the second part of A Good Deed Gone Wrong by Pat McManus. So in the first part of the story, Pat and his friend Eddie go on a sled run and their neighbor Rancid tries to try it and breaks his leg. And here they're trying to make amends um, for what they did. A couple of Saturdays later, Eddie and I were walking along the highway, pulling my sled, the runners of which were slightly splayed out, but still worked. We had been trying to come up with an idea for making amends with Rancid when we saw a furry shape flying on the highway. Both of us had fine roadkill collections, and this specimen looked exceptional. It's mine, says the rush board. You got the last one. No siree, Eddie said. I remember. You got that nice flattened toad last fall. And hey, what is this anyway? Wow, it's a bobcat. Feel it. It must have just been killed. It's still warm. Look, it's got a little bit of blood on its head where the car hit it. But otherwise, it's in great shape. Well, I better take my bobcat home. Maybe I'll stuff it. <coughs> no, you won't. I'll take it home and stuff it. Hey, wait a minute. I have an idea. We'll give it to Ransom. He can skin it and sell the hide, and then he won't be mad at us. What do you say, Eddie? Eddie reluctantly agreed. We loaded the bobcat on my sled and dragged it over to Rancid's shed. I pushed the door gently open and peeked inside to make sure Rancid wasn't close enough to swap me before he saw we had brought him a present. The old woodsman was in bed, snoring loudly, his casted foot sticking out from under the covers and resting on a block of firewood. He had pulled a red wool stocking cap over his bare foot where it stuck out of the cast. Rancid's still asleep, I whispered to Eddie. Should we wake him up? Crazy Eddie grinned. Nah, he's probably all pooped out from dragging that cast around with him. We'll just take the bobcat in and lay it on the table next to his bed, where he can see it when he first wakes up. It'll be a nice surprise for him. We carried the bobcat in and laid it on the table next to the snoring Rancid. Eddie stood the arrangement. No good, he whispered. It looks too dead. He looked around and found a box of kitchen matches. He used two of them to prop apart the big cat's lips in a pretty fair imitation of a snob. Then he stuck the matchbox under the animal's chin so it looked as if he were holding his head up, ready to spring. We tiptoed out, hunkered alongside the wall to await the old woodman's awakening. I think he's going to be real surprised, Eddie said. Yeah, me too. Presently, Rance had stopped snoring. He muttered something in his sleep. <coughs> then apparently he banged the table with his hand because we heard a bump and the sound of the matchbox hitting the floor. What in tarnation? Get! Get! Get away from me! Eddie and I chuckled. A table crashed the floor. A chair was flung against the wall. And a block of firewood sailed out the door. All of this was accompanied by a terrible roaring and spelling and the wildest cussing I had ever heard. Get back! Get back! Francis yelled amid all the bangs, crashing the thumb. <coughs> I didn't think you'd be this surprised. <laughs> No fooling us, Anderson. Maybe you better leave right now. We can tell him later about our present form when he isn't so surprised. At that moment, there was a furious rattling of crutches, and Ransom burst out of the cabin, shot across the yard, and into his privy, slamming the door. Eddie and I were so startled we couldn't move. Then, the bobcat walked out the door, chewing on a matchstick. He gave us a contemptuous glance and went off up the mountain, shaking its head, either because it had a headache or because it couldn't believe what it had just witnessed. <laughs> Rancid opened the privy door crack and watched the bobcat till it disappeared. <coughs> then he saw us. Crazy Eddie and I started toward home. You ever seen Rancid move that fast before? He asked. Nope, I said, glancing over my shoulder. Especially not on crutches. He didn't even use his legs, Eddie said, with a touch of all. Had those old crutches flipping around like spokes on a wheel. <coughs> <coughs> I see you don't speak Japanese either, Eddie said, puffing clouds of vapor in the ice here. Yeah, I said, puffing my clouds of vapor. Probably will after this, though. <laughs> we passed Daft on Mrs. Swisher's car, a skew on the road below Rancid's shed. She was staring vacantly at us, her mouth hanging open. It's Saturday, Mrs. Swisher, Eddie yelled as we went past. Sunday till tomorrow! She didn't reply, but I could tell she was going to have trouble getting to sleep again that night. It isn't often you see a naked man on crutches with a red stocking cap over his foot chase two boys through the snow on a cold winter morning. What was even stranger? The old woodsman kept gaining on us. 